Hi there, <laughs> everyone out in Facebook land. Happy Friday to you. Have you ever wondered about the energy in your home, even in your life, your space, whether you're dwelling or you're selling? There are ways to increase the energy, not only for yourself and your family living in the home, but if you're selling your home for those potential buyers. And if you increase their energy and raise their energy, they're going to be excited. They're going to stay in the space longer. And the ultimate goal is to make an offer and buy your home. So I am so excited and privileged uh, to have my guest uh, this morning, who was just a sweetheart. Uh, she's from Seattle area. And she, uh, on the fly, jumped in as my other feng shui artist um, were moving her out to two weeks because uh, she had a family emergency. So thank you so much, uh, Jen for jumping in. This is Jenny Hones from Three Frog Design. She is a designer. She is a feng shui consultant, master, and an author. And so we have an expert with us today uh, to share with us all of the nuances and the energy raising techniques and tricks that you want to stay tuned to watch and learn and implement. So welcome, welcome, Jenny. Uh, am I pronouncing your name right? Nakaho Hones? Nakao. Nakao. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nakao. I'm Japanese, so that's yes. a Japanese name. Nakao, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, welcome so much. And again, thank you. I know it's a couple hours earlier there in Seattle. Thank you so. for having me, Kat. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. I just, you know, people say a lot of things about the internet, Facebook, etc. But, you know, that's how you and I connected. And that's how I connect with a lot of people. And, mm -hmm. uh, of course, we we chat and meet beforehand to make sure we're a good fit. And uh, I think based on our dialogue prior to going live, you and I could chit chat for the next couple hours and not run out of things to say, right? <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. So our audience a little bit about, um, let's start off with how mm -hmm. did you uh, get into the business uh, design uh, slash feng shui? Yes, I was a stay at home mom, actually, because my husband was in the shipping industry and we lived in various countries. Oh, OK. And so uh, we lived in I, I grew up in Tokyo. I'm from Honolulu originally. And oh, wow. then we moved to Singapore. We moved to the Middle East. And then when I came here, I had to find something I could do because I was, you know, a stay at home mom, because in the other countries, I couldn't work because of visa issues. Ah, so I decided to go back to school and I became an interior designer. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then like everybody, I was reading all these feng shui books and I read stuff on the internet and I was very curious about it. Yes. And I also st uh, study a lot of Japanese cultural arts. One is uh, Ikebana, which is a flower arrangement. Ikebana. And I've heard of that. Yes. Yeah, It's Japanese flower arrangement. So, uh -huh. I was in the Ikebana group in Seattle and they oh. invited a speaker and he was a feng shui master and he talked about feng shui and I thought, wow, I've, you know, never met a real feng shui person. Right. And, uh, so I asked him if he taught classes in Seattle and he said, yes. And that's how I started my feng shui journey. Ah, wonderful. Yes. And I imagine that you bring with you just uh, how could you not from all of the various exotic countries that you lived in, you know, my experience uh, having been in real estate for so many years and design and staging is that different cultures have different sensibilities. You know, like I would have one culture that had to have the door facing a certain way and another culture that wasn't an issue, but they had to have this um, so did, did you find that to be interesting, the various countries? <clears throat> yes. Every country has their own system or the way they live is different. And so I had to learn the hard way. And ma I made a lot of mistakes. That's <laughs> what they call experience, <laughs> right? That, that's the voice of experience, right? That you've fallen down and made mistakes and, and, and come out with a lot more knowledge to share with, with yes. folks. Yeah. For example, when we I moved to Kuwait, you know, we had to look for a place to live. And then I, what I've noticed was, like in the West, your uh, bathrooms are usually far away from your dining room. Yes. But what I found was all the bathrooms were, were they were right next to the dining room. And I couldn't figure out why. In what, what country was that, Jenny? This is in Kuwait. 
In Kuwait, okay. Yeah, and then it was very strange for me, and I so I, I asked somebody finally, and I said, why do they have a bathroom right next to the dining room? That's like the worst place. You yes. <laughs> and they said, oh, no, it's because in their culture, you know, they're uh, Muslim, they wash before they eat. Ah. So they wash their, you know, hands and feet and face and everything. So they're cleansed before they eat food. Oh, I love that. I'm so glad that's the answer. I was hoping it wasn't because they had digestive issues. <laughs> <laughs> had to run to the bathroom quick. <laughs> yeah, so they're very clean, you know, and they, and they, you know, respect their food. And so that's a way to make it convenient for their guests and families. Yes. Yes, I years and years ago in Southern California, I ate at it was Moroccan, which I think is similar. But yes. you know, they bring the bowls of and you wash yes. your hands before you actually, you know, you sit on the floor, eat with your hands, but you wash your hands before you yes. start eating with your hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 it wasn't for the bathroom; it really was to wash a convenience to yes. to cleanse before the ritual of eating. Yes, Absolutely. yes, because that you know, breaking bread, eating is so sacred and even ceremonial in I would say every country right even our country um, so much so um, let's go back to energy let's go back to energy let's dive into yes the energy because I think some people don't realize um, that everything is energy yes right everything and <laughs> they used to think you know real well really just you know we are energy but every cellular molecular into our dna even this big diamond <laughs> paperweight <laughs> is energy it's, so it's all energy and it's they've realized some probably 20 years ago now that we are actually connected to our universe Absolutely. in an energetic field, in an energetic way. This is why manifestation um, um, is, is so profound and prevalent and works because we are all connected. I think if people realize that and we're more aware of that, you know, and, and raise their level of consciousness on that, it would just be like a game changer. So mm -hmm. how can our um, viewers um, in their space, mm -hmm. what are some key um, in your experience as a designer and a consultant, Feng Shui consultant can raise or even change or correct? And I know you, know, <clears throat> you and I said, we, we can talk for, for days, which is why mm -hmm. we're having another consultant in two weeks on mm -hmm. Feng Shui, on the Feng Shui ability corrections, um, raising the level, um, uh, et cetera. Uh, what are some top areas in your experience that where we could, uh, let's, let's talk about raising the energy. Okay. Level. I think most of us suffer from at times in the day or our life of low energy levels. Right. How could our space be affecting that? Right. So first let me talk about, like you said, everything has energy. You're absolutely right. In the feng shui I practice, which is called form school, we say form defines energy, which means everything is a form, so mm. everything has energy. Mm. So for like example, that. I have a pencil here, and we know, you know, you and I, we're living beings, and so we have a, a certain type of vibration. And we only think in terms, in the past, I would say that we would think that only things that are alive have energy, for example. Exactly. Pets, people, uh, plants. We think that's energy. However, yes. non -thing, things that are not alive, inanimate things, actually do carry a form of energy. Yes. And we can assess that energy by its shape and also by its material. And so the difference between live things and non-live things is the vibration level. Mm -hmm. So you and I connect really well because our vibration levels are similar. And we like that. We resonate. So when it's less, the vibration is different, I don't resonate as much with the pencil as I do to something alive. Yes. So in that sense, in your house, when you come inside the house, it's nice to have a person there because your energy is relating. 
And if you don't have a person, a pet is nice. It's a little lower, different energy, different vibration, but it's still alive. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have pets, the next best thing is live plants. Uh. So if you are staging and you enter a home and there's something alive, you immediately have a better connection if there are no plants at all. Mm -hmm. So if you open the front door, if they see something green, there's an affinity right there. Like this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's an affinity. The energy vibration is close. So it's nice when you open that door and there's something green, you know? And so you think, oh, you're making an outdoor connection to an indoor connection. It's not a cold connection. There's a nice transition. I like that. So let me ask you if if folks, um, you know, with, again, whether they're just living in their home or mm -hmm. um, or trying to sell their home, mm -hmm. um, how do, say, right now we have a lot of, in fact, I just took uh, about 20 pictures of all the sago palms that are all brown because of our snow oh. here. And oh. I'm looking at it as a very artistic, it's going to be an artistic compilation. However, they will come back once you prune them all down, they will all come back. But in regular circumstances, if you've got dead plants on the porch or a dead tree, or how does that affect um, your energy? Yeah, it doesn't, it does affect your energy. It just kind of lowers it, you know, you don't feel as uplifted, you know, mm -hmm. and, but you see energy is not always constantly up, mm. just like the seasons, you know, in a natural environment, we go through seasons and our body also, you know, kind of goes with the season. So for example, in spring, we're kind of ready to sprout in summer. We're all out in fall. We harvest. And Thank you for bringing up spring. And for those of you who are watching, this is the first of our uh, renewal and spring and March um, segments. So that's awesome that you bring up spring because it's it is it's it's renewal, right? We start to hear the birds again. We that's start right. to see uh, things bloom. That's right. So, for example, we can it can go down. You know, in the winter time, it's a time to rest. Oh. Kat, you're frozen for me. So let me talk about, let me talk about being connected to the energy. You know, when you have, um, it's, th is there a difference between real plants and artificial plants? Yes, there is. Because the real plants actually, you know, gives off that vibration. And so because we're natural beings, we'll feel it as more than an artificial plant. But still, an artificial plant, gives us the impression that it's real because nowadays they look so real that it's good. You know, why not have an artificial plant if your space cannot um, use a real plant because it's, for example, too dark, you know, and, and especially if you're staging, it's very temporary. So go ahead and use the, um, <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Back. Oh, uh, I don't know what happened. It must have been something on our side. The, the so connection. <laughs> Just in case. Awesome. Awesome. I, and I don't. Yeah. Hopefully you were still on, but maybe not. Could you for the last 30 seconds repeat just in case our audience didn't didn't hear that. Um, sorry, everybody. We had to check some technical difficulties. Um, I was just talking about is there a difference between real live plants and artificial plants yes that you read my mind because i would have asked you that yeah so the connection the energy connection is different so you know because we are live and they are the, the life plants are there so there is a better energy connection but still an artificial plant still does wonders because some places in a house where you can't have a life plant it makes you feel good you know, it gives you a little bit of greenery and, you know, it, it's good, but it's not as good as a live plant. As a live plant. So for those of us who have maybe a brown thumb, and that's w really one of the reasons I think I had mentioned to you before we went live, uh, that we have launched a division cat's eye decor and more, and we do custom biophilia. Uh, this is some of our table art, but we do large um, preserved 
uh, moss that's sourced from all over really the world. Um, wow. And it brings, um, it, it, it brings, it actually raises your endorphins seeing it, even though mm -hmm. it's, it, it was live and preserved. Um, I think it's a step up from probably your, you know, your, your plastic or silk yeah. arrangements yes. because, because it was live. Material. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And, and I think even, you know, to, to your point on that, it doesn't raise your energy as much artificial plants. Mm -hmm. um, but because our, uh, you know, muscle has memory, our, our senses mm -hmm. have memory. So yeah. when we sense that, when we feel that, um, it brings in a, a sense and raises those endorphins, because it has a memory of nature, of outdoors of you know the connection to source would you agree yeah, with that you're absolutely you're absolutely correct absolutely Wonderful. so like we're talking about natural elements you know uh, and vibrations so yes like you said yours your product hat is a natural but dried element so it's just like wood so we have uh, a connection to wood more than we would in pottery more than we would to, for example, plastic, mm. you know? And mm. it's just because it's more natural. Yes. Yeah. We and have aren't we seeing, uh, aren't we seeing Jenny from a design perspective? Mm -hmm. We're seeing the, the natural elements um, coming back into play uh, more in terms mm -hmm. of design, you know, mixing the elements Mm -hmm. um, you know, the textures, the, the wood, the natural stone, yes. uh, the greenery, all of those things. I think we as humans, you know, we, we kind of thirst, you know, because we're so connected to our devices and our computers and our iPads and all of that. I think innately we are hungering for to get back to the basics of our source and of nature. Yeah. Are you seeing that in your design elements? Yes. We're seeing a lot of wood. We're seeing a lot of uh, natural, like you say, natural elements. And I think part of that is also because we're trying to be more, uh, what would you say? You know, we're conscious of saving the earth. You know? Yes, sustainable. Using, yes. You know, sustainability is green design. Yes. And so a lot of the man-made items cannot be, you know, um, recycled i mean yes some of them can but mostly if it's natural material it can be sent back to the earth and it will become part of the earth again. absolutely and it doesn't have you know like you know polypropylene and off-gas chemicals and things like that um we're, we're going to have a guest uh Lori gosca from uh, essential living who's going to talk about you know is your is your home making you sick? Oh, and, that's a big deal. Yeah. So y'all want to tune in on that one because mm -hmm. um, that's an, a, another area. Uh, and I'm sure you would agree, Jenny, mm -hmm. that raising your vibration uh, in your space has to do with all of the senses, you know, yes. Um, yes. what you see, what you smell, what you hear, all, yes. all of those things um, to raise our vibration and have a, a, an improved sense of well-being. Yeah, um, so important. So very important right now that so many more people, <clears throat> excuse me, are working from home, right? Yes, because we're working from home, we have to create an environment that makes us productive because we have a lot of distractions. Mm. And the major distraction is this, right? Wow. Here. Yes. And so what I do, because I'm here <laughs> like everybody else, right? I distracted so what I try to do is I tried many things I put it to the side and then I put it in a box and it seems and I put it in another room but it, it was bothering me so if I have it near me in a box that one extra effort to ah. take it out of the box was good oh I like that I like that just putting it in the box because then your mind ha is conscious to go okay I'm disrupting the moment I'm disrupting whatever if I'm doing my production for my job or I'm paying attention to my child or my spouse or a business partner. Uh, you have to then consciously think, OK, I'm 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 doing a disruptor. I'm going to have to take it out of the box and maybe you're going to think twice. Right. <laughs> if you don't see it, it doesn't bother you as much. If you see it, then you want to look at it. 
Yes. If it's not there, it's much better. Yes, absolutely. We're, we're so easily influenced, you know. We are. And, you know, I, I'm guilty. I know probably a lot of other people are guilty as well. You know, I have the shiny ball syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> if it's shiny, I'm going to, and then you get distracted. You're on your phone. You go, wait a minute. I was going to go in and pay a bill and now I'm shopping for a jacket. What's going on? <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. And then, and then add insult to injury. You've got Amazon one click. That's right. That's right. So in Feng Shui, one of the things we do is we try to remove distractions. If remove you're distractions. Mm -hmm. yes. And because everything has energy, everything can become a distraction. Yes. So the less stuff in your room when you're working, the better. Absolutely. So and having an organized space is important. Yeah, you don't want to see the rest of my desk, but I'm working on it. I'm really, I, I'm, I think most people on Zoom, it's like, okay, we've got you can, this space, but you don't want to see the rest of the space. But I'm working on it because I know that if my space is in order, I'm going to feel settled because if not, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, it, you know, for me, if it's not, I'm constantly um, feeling on edge that I need to be yes. doing it. I need to be doing something else. I need to be straightening my space before I can do what I'm doing right now. And that just prevents me from doing what I'm doing right now in a 100% uh, place. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely correct. So, you know, to think it through first, okay, organize this first, and then we'll do this. It just makes you more calm. And when you're more calm, you make better decisions. Mm. Your actions are better because mm. you're not agitated. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's the key of feng shui. It's how do we make ourselves in a condition where we can make sense and we can make good decisions. Because yes. every decision leads to some kind of result. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just talking to my daughter on the phone before this call saying, honey, all you got to think about is what you're going to do next. You don't have to save the world. You don't have to <laughs> cure cancer. Just, okay, I've got this situation. What am I going to do next? And I think the, the feng shui concepts really that and, you know, being centered, calming ourselves. You know, I, I did a, a little Tuesday tip uh, last summer about, you know, just breathing. I, I wow. find myself and I think a lot of people shallow breathe, mm -hmm. find yourself, you're not really taking full mm -hmm. diaphragmatic breaths. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this segment was just about four, 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 and four, breathing in four, holding it for four, fully exhaling for four and holding it for four. And I do that. I literally do that a day because I'm just a natural uh, shallow breather. Oh. And I think a lot of people are. And wow, we need oxygen, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody, let's all take a breath. Hold it for four. And exhale. Another four. I feel calmer already, even though I can hear my puppy dog scratching on the back door. How about you, Jenny? <laughs> yes, yes. Oxygen is wonderful. And yes. it's, you know, we can it, do it any time of day. We can do it any time. Yeah. And that's when I, I really, it's really funny because after I did that segment, I realized how often I do it. I'll do it in the car when there's traffic. I'll do, you know, and yeah, you can do it anytime. It's a free gift to yourself. Oxygen. When well, I went to visit some friends in, in Denver, they actually have cans of oxygen, you know, for the, because of the elevation. Oh. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. You know, oh. give yourself a shot of wow. oxygen. Wow. <laughs> but you don't even have to buy a can. Yeah, we're not at 4,000 elevation here. You don't even have to buy a can. You can do it yourself. Yeah. Um, and then one other hint I can give you is you put your hand on your stomach. And you push your stomach out when you breathe. And then you push it in. To exhale. Yes. You yes. Know? That's excellent. That's yeah, because then you can really tell that you're doing yeah. diaphragmatic, diaphragmatic breathing instead of up here, shallow breathing. Yeah, shallow breathing yeah. and deep breathing. So just yes. put your hand on your stomach and make sure your hand goes out and in. Excellent.
Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, balance and um, raising our energy is really, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's so complex, but really so easy um, yeah. to, to take easy steps. So we've got plants. We, we've learned that uh, plants are greenery, mm -hmm. preferable living. If you've got a brown thumb like me, uh, it can be uh, biophilia and, and or artificial. Um, we, we use a lot of greenery in staging. It just, um, you know, I wouldn't do a stage with or even a design without some sort of a greenery, one of those right. elements. Right. Um, we know, you know, um, in terms of keeping our space together, um, that breathing is an easy fit. I just love that. And I love your tip about holding the belly. Uh, because that's something that we can just do at any time, you know, when the kids are stressing out, the spouse is stressing out, the, you know, you've got a leak in the ceiling, you know, what, whatever yeah. the problem yeah. is. Remember, um, breathe. Breathe. <laughs> just breathe. And it will make such a difference in in your, your whole life. Uh, life really yeah. you know yeah. my granddaughter's nine years old right now but when she was wow. a toddler and probably many of you many of you as parents have done this you know when they do their little tantrums you know and so forth and you stop and, and just say we would say to elizabeth now just breathe take a deep breath mm -hmm. and we would have put her through the breathing yeah and ta -da. Yeah, yeah she was she was calmed down well, my so, kids had tantrums too they would just i would just let them have their tantrum yes they get tired you yes. Know? And then when they're tired, then they calm down. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's yeah. another method, too, that works. That sometimes they don't tire and you have to intervene. But, um, yeah, I think it's good to let kids and really people, too, go through your emotions, whatever they are, and then you'll you'll come back cleansed. As long as you do it in a positive manner, you don't punch holes in the wall or say nasty things to people <laughs> or whatever. So let's talk about uh, placement. <clears throat> Because okay. again, I know you as a professional designer and a feng shui consultant. Um, what are some easy, I would say, some common maybe mistakes that folks are possibly making in furniture placement? And I've okay. got my ideas too, but I want to get your take. Um, and, and some maybe corrections, easy corrections that folks could do in their space to um, create and increase the energy in their space. What I often see is sometimes the furniture layout, if the room is big, it can be too spread out. Yes. And then when it's too spread out, the sofas are very far apart. You really can't create a conversation. Yes. You end up shouting at each other because they're too far apart. So you have to make it a comfortable distance where you can actually create and the energy can be exchanged. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely. what I, I, I see. I love that. And yeah, I. it's funny. That's the first thing that you bring up because I see that so much. We do a lot of occupied consultation as well. And, you know, we, we love... <laughs> Excuse me. We love our open concept homes. Mm -hmm. uh, it keeps us stagers and designers in business because, you know, it, and let's just talk about that. So, so let's say you're living in a space and it's got... <laughs> The, the common thing and the easiest thing that people do is they have the open space and they just shove the furniture up against the wall mm -hmm. because they don't know what, you know, they don't know uh, what they don't know in terms of what you just mentioned conversation. Okay. So that can uh, inadvertently lower our vibration when we're living in the space. Um, correct. Right. Not even defining it for buyers, but just living in the space. And you may not be able to put your finger on it. You just don't quite feel connected or high vibe, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so by moving the furniture in, yeah. um, you do create, as you said, Jenny, that that intimate conversation area. You're now focused at whatever the focal point is. Maybe it's a fireplace. And you've got your 18 inches from the coffee table to the couch mm -hmm. so that you can walk around the coffee table. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then depending on how much space you have from the back of the couch to the wall, right. you want to you make sure, because all homes are a different space, you want to make sure that you have at least 36 inches 
um, space to walk around. If you have more than that, if you have a huge space and you have more than that, you can anchor it with a sofa table. Yes. Right? Absolutely. That's wonderful. Yeah. You can anchor it and put something behind it so it looks like it's on purpose and not, oh, what's what's wrong with all that space? Yes. It doesn't look like it's floating. Like it's floating. Exactly. That That's what prevents it from looking like it's floating. It's now anchored. Correct. Um, the other thing on couches I like to mention is, and my team knows this, you know, sometimes you've got some challenging floor plans, again, yes. whether it's design or mm -hmm. staging. If at all possible, you don't want to put the couch to where where you enter into the living space, you hit the back of the couch. Because that's yeah. a good feng shui, right? I was just going to bring that one up. Yay. Yay. See, I haven't, I, I'm going to have to take your training, but I know a little bit about feng shui. Yeah. Um, you know, just, that's not welcoming. No, exactly. And that's the bottom line. It's not welcoming. Yeah. And it makes, the space, people. it makes the space look smaller, right? Yeah. yeah. The living room is, you want to be able to go in, welcome people so they want to sit down and want to have a conversation because that's what builds relationships. Absolutely. So we've started, and I've seen other designers and stagers do it. I call it Cat's Conversation Pit. Um, cool. So when we do uh, investor homes, oftentimes they have these formal living rooms in the older yes. home that we yes. don't use anymore. So mm -hmm. rather than making it a formal, because your buyer, who's probably going to be in their 30s or 40s, is going to go, what the heck is that? Mm -hmm. um, so we we do like three to four chairs, a low coffee table, an anchor rug, and make it Cat's Conversation Pit. Oh. And how welcoming is that, right? Yes. As, as you say, it creates that, you know, <laughs> excuse me, that environment where people want to sit down, have a chat, have a have a beverage and connect. Well, you funny you say that, you know, Kat, I just did a, uh, a couple of years ago, I did a kind of a conversation pit like that for a client because she had a formal dining room that the family never used. Right. And so we decided to make that her wine room. Right. We put in all low uh, refrigerator, you know, wine mm -hmm. cabinet. Right. And then we put a little round table with round swivelly chairs around. And so she could have her friends over and just talk around this little table. Yep. And have a conversation and a glass of wine. And she called. You know what? I don't drink wine, but it makes me want to just go and sit there and have a glass <laughs> and she of Perrier. Drink a lot of wine either. But it was kind of a nice feeling. Oh, like it, just a walk. yeah, just a just a, a yeah, a welcoming area where you can sit and just enjoy the company, no matter what you're drinking. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so that's she said, great. We never use that room, and now we use it. Hmm. Hmm. And, and that's it. A lot of folks, you know, when, when I used to be in new home sales, I would let folks know just because this has a chandelier and it looks like a dining room. Hey, if you have a pool table and that's your lifestyle, do that. I mean, I'm right now in what was supposed to be a dining room. And Ooh. yeah, it was too small for this big, heavy set I brought from California. Mm -hmm. So we had it as a library for many years. Mm -hmm. And now I took my desk out of my uh, shared room with my granddaughter as, as her room when she comes over. And now I have my own office. Wonderful. So, you know, cr create, you know, relook at what your space is just because mm -hmm. it has a chandelier, take out that chandelier and put something else and make it a room that fits you, whether it's a hobby room or a, a wine room or a study or whatever. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah, that's exactly what I tell my clients. Who cares what other people think? This is your home. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, it, and it, you and I were talking. It's the opposite of staging. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because yeah. it's personal. It's personalized. And in, in staging, you know, it's all about who the buyer is, and it's marketing. We're going to market to right. the broadest right. audience to sell your home for your price point in this demographic, et cetera. Right. But uh, then we switch gears to our design clients and say. You know, like I had a client once where we were out looking at rugs and she goes, well, I don't know. You know, I, I like this, you know, but hey, it's just me. I go, wait a minute. It's all about you. <laughs> what do you mean? It's just you. It's all about you. What you like. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. That's so yes. true. Because yes. that's and it's, that's the energy thing. If you like it, it makes your energy go up. Mm. So it raises your energy. 
But yes. if you have no connection, it doesn't do anything for you. Yes, I love that. And you know, many of us, I mean, I started off in my day, I'm not going to give away uh how ancient I am, but you know, many of us, no matter how old we are, we started in our twenties with just a lot of uh, things that were given to us, yes. right. From family members to get started, yeah. you know, and um, so it may or may not uh, connect with you, but it, it got you going, you know, you, right. you probably had a pretty good vibration at that because you weren't in an empty space. You know, you had loving people who donated stuff uh, to right. you, but I, I love that concept that you say, you know, that it is about you. And, and then if we just bring in, let's say, bring in color, one of my favorite topics mm -hmm. um, is color. You know, when I go out to a design client, the first thing we find out is what are your happy colors? Yeah, that's right. Great. Yeah. I mean, we have to think about the fixed elements because we don't want to clash and we want it to be cohesive. But yeah. after that, it's let's find your happy colors, because if you have your happy colors in your space, you're going to mm -hmm. raise your vibration. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And feel connected. And that's such a, you know, it's such a trickle down um, effect. I think, you know, the whole, you know, this is why I'm fascinated with, um, with your specialty in Feng Shui, because it has such a trickle down effect on our well being um, as having this human experience. You're absolutely right. People, uh, in, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions in Feng Shui because traditionally they say, oh, a red door is good in Feng Shui. So everybody yes. started, you know, to paint their door red. But there's a story behind it. In ancient China, long, long, long time ago, only the high-ranking government officials could paint their front door red. It identified. Ah. Oh. But over time, that law disappeared. And then when that disappeared, everybody painted their front door red because they wanted to be thought of as wealthy and, you know, high-ranking. Yes. That's where this feng shui belief began. Mm. So a red door is great in Asian culture because we love red. It's a yes. really auspicious color. It's festive, you know, yes. and that's fine. But it doesn't mean that other colors don't work. You got to right. work with what your, matches your house, you know? Right. Or, or in my case, you know, the, uh, the, the color the, you love. The board, <laughs> the architectural committee board. It says yeah. you, can't do, you have to look like everybody else. But, <laughs> but that's okay. Inside your house, you can do whatever color you that you want. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. So, uh, the color is complicated. We actually had jo uh, Joanna Lynette Weary here uh, as our guest, who is a color expert. Oh. Um, yes, and um, talking about you know uh, color and the nuances of color because color can be complicated. Yes. Um, which is why I keep learning. You know, I I have three I certifications do. on color, and I'm still learning about color uh, because it it can be complicated. Um, but it's it's fascinating, you know, um, mm -hmm. as well, because, mm -hmm. again, back to your industry, color can change our energy depending on how we want to feel and live mm -hmm. in the space. That's correct. Um, From an energy perspective, we like more pastel colors because they're more calming. Mm -hmm. Strong, bold colors have a lot of energy. And so you have to use them carefully because if you have too much of a strong color in a large space or a large wall, it can be draining. That, I'm so glad you brought up that point. I just had a design client, you know, say, well, I want to do some niche walls. And I says, well, when I come out there, we'll take a look typically. And, and I actually learned this from Joanne. Um, you don't, you want, don't want to do niche or, or accent colors, you want to stay on the same color card, maybe three to the most or four up on the same color card. So you'll be cohesive. Yes. Back in the day, um, you know, it can date your space. If you put the bold red niche, mm -hmm. it, it can, it, it dates, but more yes. importantly, you know, because again, it's your space. If you don't care that your space is looking dated, more importantly, it raises the energy and could be a reason why you're feeling angst that you don't right. know it. Now, rest, right. restaurants, I believe, use red, a shade of red, probably more of a brick red, because they want you to eat more. Yes. They want that energy to be raised. Yes. Right? yes. Um, 
but you probably don't want that in your house. <laughs> and, you know, and, and unless it's a, you know, uh, maybe a game room or uh, I don't know, even that, I don't know. Do you see that anymore in, in your, with your design clients where they're using uh, bright colors? Uh, not, it's kind of died down. Yeah. Not very many people have a strong accent wall. You right. Know, more more uh, wallpapers coming back you know this it is um, texture yes just to give it that little contrast yes yes are you seeing that a lot more i i know i've i have seen it i haven't had any clients bite on it but um i do like some of them are just even just textural yes. uh, as opposed to having a lot of color right right it's just kind of like the same tone but in a texture yes yeah, just to give it a little bit more warmth. So we're going over a little bit, but I don't okay. mind. Uh, I, I don't mind because I think this is a fascinating topic. So uh, once it goes on YouTube, you can scroll forward if, if you don't, you know, resonate with what we're saying. But um, I want to finish up with another element um, in raising our vibration. What can you talk to us about in terms of lighting and i know lighting affects color but how lighting can either uh, raise or drain our energy levels yes lighting is a very important aspect in feng shui because basically when the room is much lighter we feel we feel uplifted so ideally natural light is very good and so to have large windows with natural light is makes us feel good is because it's nature but yeah. in a lot of times we don't have that luxury and we must use artificial lighting. Nowadays we have LED lights that have, you know, natural sunlight and, you know, things like that that can help. In a bathroom, you know, you can use a warm light because you want to look and put your makeup on and you want to look warm and, you know, you don't want it too cold look and you don't want to look blue. <laughs> in the bathroom. I like to have a little bit more warmth. In a kitchen, you want to see your food, you want a little bit maybe more cooler lights. That's what I think. Um, and in the living room, again, we go warm. So that's how we would differentiate it from an interior design perspective. From a feng shui perspective, it's kind of the same thing. If we don't have enough light, then it can make you depressed. Mm. So turn on those lights. If you're feeling down, brighten up the room and you will feel better. You just will feel you better. You will feel better. That's one of the first things we do when we go in, you know, for staging. In fact, we did one recently. They had, you know, all beautiful windows off the second balcony. It was a three-story uh, potential light everywhere, but it was all kept with the shades drawn. And when you walked oh. in, it looked very dark. And oh. just by opening up those blinds alone, it was like, it was like another space. Oh, so that's a great tip. You know, a, a lot of us, uh, my husband's like this. If I didn't go and open up the shutters and everything, he'd probably just live in a cave. Um, <laughs> that's the first thing I do when I get up because it elevates my vibration. Yes. Or my energy, as you mentioned. So if you're feeling down or you're feeling depressed, even if you don't really normally open up the the shades uh open them up you'll feel better you'll raise your vibration yes absolutely absolutely and then open the windows sometimes you need you know new air let the air flow too. yes that's yeah my husband's good at that he will you know we that's a really good point because we get so incubated don't we with yeah. you know, having the ac on and mm -hmm. and all of our you know hvac you know heater and ac that we sometimes are in a vacuum seal and yeah. that's all not only does that raise your vibration when you open up a window every every few days or once a week open up a window or door and let some fresh air and movement in it's yeah. not it not only will raise your vibration as jenny said but it is healthy for you to, yeah. to mix in and not just keep circulating the same air. Right, right. To bring in some fresh air. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love it. I know it's hard if you live in a cold country or a really hot country. Yes. Place. Just even a little bit yep. once in a while, just to change the energy. Yes. Would be very good. Right. Even if it's just for a few minutes. Oops, yeah. Flip, flipped again. Okay. I hope we don't go out again. Janet, you have been amazing. I, I'm I'm so hoping that you can come back at a future date and um, talk 
talk again because um, just so much good information. I hope everyone who viewed this, if you like it, please make a comment, share it. That's how we can continue to uh, bring people like Jenny on, experts on, and bring you some valuable information that hopefully that you can use to make your life better. And as always, have a great weekend. Stay positive, stay hopeful, and stay connected. And we thank you so much for connecting with us today. Um, thanks so much, Jenny. Thanks have so a great much. weekend, and um, hope your appointment goes well. Thanks again for joining thank me you. so early. Bye.